Today, April 19th, we honor those who fought in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. On this day, my Jewish people remember our heroes, the ones who bravely faced Nazi brutality to fight for freedom. While many of these courageous souls perished in the battle, their legacy lives on. They remind us of the resilience and valor of our people and, and the persecution we've endured and overcome. This memorial is especially meaningful as we recognize how anti-Semitism, especially in North America, is gaining ground and becoming more of a problem than it's ever been for many, many years. We remember to chart a new future for the Jewish people, where anti-Semitism, this oldest hatred, is no longer a problem. Clearly, we still have a long way to go, so it's more important than ever to remember our fallen heroes in this fight against anti-Semitism. The Nazi invasion and the construction of the Warsaw Ghetto came about in a number of different stages. In 1939, the Nazis invaded Poland and within a short time implemented harsh anti-Semitic regulations leading to the construction of what would become the Warsaw Ghetto. The Nazis also built ghettos in other cities with uh, large populations in Poland, such as Lodz and Vilna. But here are the four stages of the development of the Warsaw Ghetto, so you can have this fixed in your mind and understand it better. In the first stage, from October 1939 to November 1940, there was a gradual isolation and gathering of the Jewish population. In the second stage, from November 1940 to July 1942, the Nazis sealed off the Warsaw Ghetto from the other side, the Aryan side, which was only for those who the Nazis deemed racially pure. The third stage, from July 22, 1942 to September 15, 1942, was the resettlement, also called by the German euphemism, the Aktion. During this time, Jewish people were transported to the Treblinka death camp, where they went straight to the gas chambers. The Aktion brought about the liquidation of more than 300,000 Jewish people. The fourth and final stage happened between October 1942 and 1943. This point was when the remaining Jewish population in the ghetto instigated a resistance, an uprising. This paragraph from the Teacher's Guide to the Holocaust provides a brief overview of the basic facts regarding the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. So during 1942, most of the ghetto residents were deported to Treblinka, leaving about 60,000 Jews in the ghetto. And the revolt took place in April 1943 when the Germans, commanded by a very cruel Jürgen Stroop, attempted to raise the ghetto and deport the remaining inhabitants to Treblinka. The defense forces, commanded by Mordechai Anilevich, included all the Jewish political parties. The bitter fighting lasted 28 days and ended with the destruction, total destruction, of the ghetto. There were hundreds, if not thousands, of Jewish believers in Jesus who perished in the Warsaw Ghetto. We especially want to honor them today. Entire congregations of Messianic Jewish people in Warsaw were destroyed, as we have records of more than a dozen Messianic congregations and fellowships in existence prior to the formation and the ensuing annihilation of the ghetto. We remember martyrs like Basili Yach, who perished in the ghetto. We also think about Rachmiel Friedland, who survived the ghetto and continued to be a light to the Jewish people for decades afterwards. Today is the 80th anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. What can we learn from it? This is so important for us. So here are a few lessons. Though some thought the Jewish people were weak, the heroes who died rather than succumb to Nazis proved the opposite. Jewish people are survivors and able to fight for their, our own lives. I'm Jewish and those of our families. If, if, if it were not true, then how would the modern state of Israel have ever been established? We must always remain vigilant and be aware of how anti-Semitism can become part of a culture and continue to fester unless it's stopped. As we read in Psalm 122 verse 6, we need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for the peace and safety of Jewish people worldwide. This day reminds us of our holy task to pray for his chosen people 
It's important to observe this day so we never forget what happened in Europe 80 years ago. By remembering and collectively saying never again, we hope to prevent another Holocaust.